This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on February the 1st, 2016. We hope you enjoy. Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Okay, Brenda, we're going to answer your question right away because we now have the media to do it. So we're going to open VLC, and this is what you say you see, a black screen yeah, not even with, the white with, the, with the comb. Yeah. Okay, uh, but up, at he, up here at the top, you have a menu. Right over there too, somebody put it no, underneath the cone it just says, where to next. Okay. Um, click on that, nothing, click on the cone, click all over. Let me, let me see if we can hide this menu. No, there's no way to hide it here. Uh, the other way that you can do this, Brenda, is, is you can, yeah, it might very well be in full screen. Uh, let me see. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Do we... the screen that looks bigger. Yeah. That one? No, that's shuffle. Random. Sorry, random. Oh, toggle video to full screen. All right. Uh, the other way to do this is to just bring the uh, VLC down to a, a manageable uh, size. And then you can open up your file browser, ex your explorer. And uh, in our case, we know we have something in music here. Okay, we know we have something in music and we know we have it in CD music. So what you can do is you can grab a hold of all of this. Okay, and you can just simply slide it over to uh, VLC. Okay, so just simply by, by dragging the item over to VLC, into the screen, you uh, tell VLC, play it. And you can do that with a movie or um, whatever other items you might have. No man should go that high. <laughs> I was doing bad things to that poor bastard. <laughs> it's your fault. That's what you see. Yes, that's what I've got. Okay. Um, If you right click on the screen, oh, okay. okay, it gives you a menu. Yeah. Okay, and you can, um, with this menu, uh, go to view, and you can uncheck full screen interface. Okay, it's checked right there, full screen interface. If you uncheck it, it will bring you back to a place where you have the menu. Or it should. <laughs> or I should say minimal interface. Yeah, you want to uncheck them both. Full screen interface and minimal interface. Uncheck them both. And there you go. Now you've got a menu. So once you have a menu, then you can you can click on media. You can click on open file and you can navigate to wherever your movie or your music is and click on it and it will start to play in in uh, VLC. So that's where I I don't know how you got that that uh, vision of of uh, the uh, um, 
the full size screen like that on minimal view, but you can get out of it by right clicking and undoing those two things. Okay. okay, let's get out of this and let's talk about iTunes. Which can I just say is a stupid name? Oh, iTunes, shush. iPod. Shush. Very uncreative. Okay, for the most part, uh, where you're going to wind up um, when you open iTunes is the iTunes Store. So how do you open it? I'll do, just double click on the icon. That I have an icon here that I downloaded iTunes from Apple. If you don't have, okay, if you don't have iTunes, let's let's go to Apple and get it. Apple. Yes. So, so. Are we only talking about that type of computer? No, no. It's iTunes is for Windows and for Mac. Okay, right. iTunes is for Windows and for Mac. So, in your search bar, just type in iTunes. Download, and it's going to take you to the Apple website where you can download iTunes now. And um, there's your download button, and you click on do download. You don't have to give them your email address. Blue button download now, and it will download, and you can install iTunes. It free? It's free. What if you were in, say, in the old XP? I had it, and I. I don't, I, I don't think there is a a uh, version of iTunes now that will work in XP. No, so oh, I have to get the new so version. Yeah, the, yeah. I'm out of the question. <laughs> so in any event, there you go. That's how to get um, iTunes. Get it from Apple directly. Now. Uh, as I said, when you open iTunes, for the most part, it's going to open in the iTunes store. Now, the first thing that we have to do with iTunes is um, get yourself, if you don't have one, an Apple ID. Well, you don't need one to operate it. No, you don't, but it makes it so much easier if you do. It's, it's much, much easier to operate in iTunes if you have an Apple ID, especially uh, if... Uh, you want to buy music? Music on the on the iTunes Store is relatively inexpensive. Relatively inexpensive. It's a good place to get. It. So, what you want to do is um, I'm signed in here, so I'm not going to sign out. Uh, but I will tell you that when you click on your name here, if you don't have an account, you can sign up for. Uh, uh, an Apple ID. Now you can use your own email address. You don't have to use an Apple email address. You can use your own or your, your most favorite email address and you fill in the rest of the information about you and it will generate um, or and you can generate um, a password for the Apple ID which gets you to the iTunes store. Write them down. Write it down. You've only got three kicks at the cat. And then Apple will lock you out of your account and you will be searching madly for a way to get back in. And there's only one way and if you didn't do it right, you're not going to get back in. Now why would you kick a poor old cat? <laughs> You've got three kicks at the cat. If you get it wrong, it will lock you out. So write it down. Put it somewhere where if you type in your, your Apple ID password and you get it wrong, go back to the paper and look carefully at it. Go slowly because that's what will happen. You can tell your computer to remember me. I have. But uh, if you want to log in every single time into the iTunes store, remember that you're, you've only got these few chances. Okay, uh, now you see across the top here that it's going to give you some things that, that you can do in Apple iTunes. Um, radio is a good place to, to go because uh, radio is free. Okay, 
So you have uh, a place where you can look through for, for the hits and your favorite radio and all of that. Um, that's pretty much free. You know. has its own radio station? Yes. What? You can search, if you're into it, you can search for new music. And when I say new music, I mean new yesterday. Okay? If you're into that kind of stuff. Most of you will not be because you won't like what you're going to hear. Um, once you've been on iTunes long enough, and you've roamed around long enough, and you've, you've sampled some things here and there, iTunes will start to know things about you, just like Google. And so here is an, uh, an entry for you. So it knows about the things that you've been wandering around and looking at. So now it's going to start making suggestions. If you like that, you'll like this. Maybe. It's not bad with it. Uh, the playlist is the music that you have already um, ripped and loaded into the computer already. That's your playlist. And my music is just simply a, um, a place that shows you where you have all of your music stored. A playlist and my music are different things. Okay? They are different things. Uh, a playlist is, built, is a list built on where your music is stored. It doesn't make a new, uh, a new entry for the music. It makes an entry of where that music is stored. This is what I like to play. I like these first ten songs, forget the other three. Okay? And that's a playlist. If you've got your music in Groove or something like that, it's going to search for that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, There are many other places that you can search for stuff too. Um, now, right beside the, the music I, the music icon here is a movie uh, icon and, and uh, programs, uh, a screen for your computer. But if you uh, click on these, these uh, four dots here, you'll see that it has a few more entries, like podcasts and iTunes U iTunes University is something that uh, Apple started a couple of years ago. Um, what it has is it has free courses from the major universities on the planet. Okay? The universities have given Apple their courses, their lectures. And if you're interested in something like astronomy or mathematics or whatever, you can find in iTunes U, you can find courses and, and uh, information about your interests. So it's it's not, free. So it's iTunes U is free. Well, that's not nice. Why don't you, go back? you can you can find books, you can find apps, and you can find internet radio. Um, internet radio is another great place to go. Let's say you're into '70s retro, whatever, uh, or '80s music, '70s or '80s. I'm more a fan. Uh, you're into R&B and soul or whatever. You can find a radio station on iTunes that will, um, that will satisfy your wants in radio type music. Yes? No? Not you? Okay. So you can satisfy those wants in iTunes. Um, I have other places that I go uh, to find my kinds of music, but iTunes is a good place to go to get music uh, running all day long on your computer, if you like, hook your speakers in, go to a radio station, and it's just like, you know, a local radio station like CHML or CKC, CKOC that used to have music. Okay? Used to. Used to. Um, I might as well leave this room because everything you're saying is... <laughs> kind of going, oh, man, a what? <laughs> we know what we're doing, James. CS what? <laughs> okay, so... These three dots over here uh, can give you some, some other indications of things um, that you might like to investigate um, for iTunes. Is there some way you can type in a station you know you want that's not on the um, or, or If you wanted to type in um, CHML, no. Oh. No, that's not how it works. These. Um, 
I don't think you can do that. Um, no, it's not going to give you what you want. Um, if if you're thinking about uh, commercial radio stations, no, these. Not a commercial. I know one that is internet only. Yeah. Not on that list. Yeah. Um, What's its category? John everything from sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties. Okay. Um, you might find that um, under. Well, it's hard to say. You might find it under classic rock, um, if that's what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So if you click on classic rock, there is a bunch of classic rock internet radio stations. There's a bunch of them there. Um, Another place you can go is Shoutcast, but I'm not going to get into Shoutcast because that's not what we're doing today. Um, there. Okay, so let's uh, get out. I just told you that these things were available, but let's get out of them. Um, now. Um, ripping music into iTunes, okay? Um, it's, it's the same thing, really. It's the same thing. Um, I, I ripped this um, CD into iTunes music. I simply opened iTunes, put the disc in the player, closed it, and iTunes... Um, essentially gave me the option to rip the music right away. Okay, so it showed me the list of the music, it went out to the internet and got the names of everything, and it did exactly this. Would you like to import my CD, Dear Old Self, um, to your computer? I've already done it, so in this case I would say no, but I've already <coughs> because I've already done it. I'm going to say no. And I'm just going to show you where it put the music. Okay, uh, so uh, what would happen if I said yes was that it would go through each song and rip it from the DVD to the computer. It just move it from the, C the CD player to the computer. Yes? Can you do that with any vehicle? Like suppose you plugged in your MP3 in the USB port. No. It won't find the music in the MP3 player. No. No, that, yeah, we, we will uh, we'll get to that uh, after a bit if, I, if we have time for it. Um, so that's what's happened, and it, it goes through these, each one, and rips them down, and I told it where to put the stuff. I told it to put it in um, music, and James very helpfully uh, moved it to CD music. Okay, but there they are. Okay. Um, I try. You try. Also, you can probably tell them that you also have the option to check mark which ones to install. Uh, so if you have a CD but you only like one song, just rip the one, one song and say, screw the others. I don't like it. Okay. Now, in this instance, what's happened is iTunes. Um, has put this music uh, into the iTunes folder, okay? I can tell it to, to put a copy in, in music, but it also put it in the iTunes folder where iTunes can find it. So let's go back here. Under music is the iTunes media, okay? So if you just start clicking through that, um, iTunes Media, Music, Doc Watson, My Dear Old South, which, was the al uh, which is the album, okay, that it knew, knew about and it put the music in there, okay. Uh, I can make playlists from there, but I'm not going to because that's a little more advanced than I want to get into with, um, with iTunes right now.
Okay, I think I closed iTunes, didn't I? Okay, um, so you can rip your music down into iTunes, and you can then you can move it to an i uh, an iPod, okay, or an iPad, or an iPhone, or an iPhone, or whatever i is. Again, very creative names. Yeah. Going on here. Um, unfortunately, it will iTunes will not see. Anything other than um, it will not see anything other than an Apple product. Now, here's here's something to consider. Let us say you have an MP3 player that is not an Apple product. Okay. If you plug it in with its USB cable. And you go to this PC or my computer and you look, you will see that there will be an entry in here for your device. Okay, if you have a Lyra player, it'll show up there as Lyra player. You can start navigating through that device until you get to its to its music folder, okay, where the where the music resides. Then you can open another window. Come on. Oops. You can open another window um, with your, um, and you can go to your music folder, and you can go to your CD music, and you can just simply Grab a hold of that uh, file folder that you made for the music and drag it over to the uh, music player, the MP3 player that you've plugged in. And lo and behold, your music will be there. You can navigate through it and uh, it will be there. There is no need to go to a, a third party program to do this for in Windows for anything that Windows can see as a hard drive. And what it's saying is, yes, I see your Lyra player as a hard drive. Navigate through the hard drive to the place where music resides, put music there, and it will play. Easy peasy. It really and truly is. Um, and there's a hundred videos on YouTube to help you through the process. There's lots of guys out there that do this and will show, be glad to show you how. Um, for a side note, for those that don't have, like are still on Windows XP and iTunes probably isn't supported, Windows Media Player does rip music as well. It's just as easy as the others. Um, but again, it only rips music. So yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't burn music, it, it only rips it. So there you go, there's a shampoo and uh, iTunes. There are a couple of others out there uh, that will do this kind of thing. The other one that, uh, that most people like to use is called Nero. N-E-R-O. N-E-R-O. Yeah. Yeah, Nero in its early days was just, it was a snap to use. People loved it, but they've, they've made it very complicated now. Um, okay. Uh, bum, 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 bum. At what point is it in your Apple ID when you put in, if you have a gift card with money? Yes. That goes in your ID. It, yes, it goes in your Apple ID. That's where it goes, okay. Yeah. Um, buy all of the things. You know, if somebody's giving you 50 bucks worth of music, yeah. um, hey, yeah. you know, 20 odd tunes. Yeah, I, know. Um, I think if, if you buy uh, individual songs, I think it's two ninety-nine. Yeah, whatever it is, but, or albums or whatever the price the is. Albums are like yeah. Prices. Yeah. And the thing of it is, is, if you have an iTunes account, 
if you have an Apple ID, um, your music will also be stored in the cloud, on the Apple cloud. If this goes away, if this messes up, if it's unrecoverable, all that stuff you paid for from Apple, still up there. You can download it again from your Apple ID. It's great. It really is. And it, uh, the storage size is almost unlimited. Because um, I think um, it's a one-time fee of 25 bucks uh, to upload an unlimited amount of music have Apple convert that music to its absolute best quality and then you download it again. So if you've got tunes that you ripped off of um, a CD um, 10, 15 years ago and you did it in uh, 64 bits, which is the very lowest quality of, of a CD rip, you can upload that music for this one-time fee of 25 bucks, you can up upload it to Apple. It will be converted to uh, 192 bits of ACC or AAC um, format, and you can download it again. And that's the best quality of music you're going to get. It's so you up your quality, and all of your stuff is saved on the cloud. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. They want me to put my stuff like that in one drive. Is that a wise idea? Um, here's. Uh, you only have 15 gigabytes, I think. Yeah. Unless you pay for more. Uh, um, it's like two months it, for more. Yeah. It's it's not a lot, but uh, you can buy more if you want to. I think you can buy up to like 50, 500 gigs or something like that. Yeah, I think. And uh, half a terabyte. It, it's two dollars per 50 gigabytes. So you go from 15 to 60. I know that math is wrong, but trust me, <laughs> yeah. I read it. It's exactly what it says. Yeah. Does. So you you have a um, you have the option to put uh, one drive as Microsoft's cloud. Um, I'm sorry. I said I see that, but I, I yeah. haven't used it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think you've got five gigs for free. Yeah, I think it's that's, five. That's why I said the yeah. math works. Yeah. You get ten plus five for free, and then you buy it if you choose to buy two. So should they use one drive then? Um, I mean, you should you, if you have something that's really, really important to you, but um, is not. Um, something that's, that's uh, what's the word I want to use, um, highly sensitive, but it's important to you, OneDrive is a good place to put it. If it's sensitive, I wouldn't do that. But if it's, um, if it's a, a couple hundred pictures that you want to have forever, OneDrive is a place to put them because as long as you have access to that account, um, your pictures are there. So even if you lose your computer, it's yeah. still there. I, I wouldn't uh, put a copy, of, uh, a scanned copy of my birth certificate there or my driver's license, but hey, pictures that are important to you but not sensitive, okay. I mean, what are the chances? <laughs> okay. Um, any more questions about iTunes? Um, a shampoo. I get things on Hotmail and I see them from iTunes and I can't find them anywhere else. Can I take them straight from Hotmail to Facebook? Here, uh, here is uh, something that you must be very careful about, Brenda, if you have an iTunes account. I do. Um, letting the information out about that account, in other words, your login information. If you get emails in Hotmail yeah, from, from, from 
yeah, uh, from other people about your, your iTunes account, and particularly, uh, please log in here, click here. No, it's Don't shows do that. Something of songs, pictures, and things through iTunes. It clearly says it's iTunes. Yeah. And my daughter says uh, they oh, may be sharing. To me, yeah, on Facebook. Well, how do I get it from Hotmail to Facebook? You, uh, you, is if it's an attachment, you can download the attachment and then upload it to Facebook. Download it where? Under your desktop or anywhere you want. If it's an attachment in email. Usually it is. It's a click on it and you get yeah. a picture. Yeah. Oh. oh, okay. All right. I think. If you look around, there might even be uh, an icon for share. Share to Facebook. No, I've looked. Yeah. Okay, well, the other thing you can do is then download it and then share it back to Facebook. Okay? That's the way to do that. Um, so uh, you've got a good idea how to get out of your problem now? Yes. Okay. Thing, yes. Any other problems with VLC? I, li I can't say this often enough. I love VLC. There isn't anything it won't play. The most uh, obscure of file formats for music and video, uh, it will play. Uh, ba -bum -bum -bum. There's one thing I noticed, Bob. When I plug in my MP3 player, which is just music, that's all it is, it doesn't play any of the printers and devices, and you find your device. If yeah. Yeah. But I also notice that if I want to go in and do anything on it, like to say delete a song, put a song in or something, it opens up File Explorer. It's highlighted. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's where you want to do these things okay. is in File Explorer. Ah, okay. okay. You want to delete them in File Explorer yeah. because that's, that's the direct link to the media that's there. I was confused of both of them being open. Yeah. The devices as well as yeah. the um, the, the one thing that you have to be careful about with any device that uh, attaches to your computer and stores stuff, music, pictures, uh, cameras, whatever, we've said this before, that uh, if you use um, your file explorer to delete stuff from that device, uh, Windows tries to be helpful and it puts a hidden recycle bin on that device. And so you delete the stuff, but the, just the header for the file is gone, so the computer can't see it, but the rest uh, of the file is there. If there is software that comes with your device to remove stuff from your device, use that. Here again, James and I ran into this with a camera. We had a, a, a four gig card in the camera for pictures. I deleted everything from the card and then James tried to take some pictures and it said it was full. Right? It said it was full. It was full because I deleted the stuff with the computer in uh, with uh, File Explorer. And it made that recycle bin on the card and didn't make anything go away. So the camera looked at the card and said, it's full of stuff. And the only way to get rid of it now was to format the card. Now there is a way to do it through Windows Explorer. You just have to do it uh, a few more steps. Is you just take the folder you want to delete, transfer it over to the computer, and then delete it? Yeah. But if you, if you try and do this on the device, you're going to run into these problems. You mean I can't delete one of the pictures I delete on the camera is still there? Yeah. If you use the camera software, if you use the delete function in the camera, they go away. Oh, that's good. If you use the software that came with the camera, What's the difference? It, they will go away. If you use um, your file explorer to delete stuff, that's where you will have the problem. Okay? It leaves all of the all of the data behind and it just takes the file header and now the computer can't see that there's anything there, so it's telling you it's empty. And it's not. Okay? Um 
Where else do we need to go with this? Anybody? Do you have a question? Yeah, I had the Cortana. Oh, Cortana. Okay. Cortana. Yes, we have a few seconds to talk about Cortana. It's stupid. Enough <laughs> <laughs> said. Enough <laughs> <Yeah>. said. <laughs> Cortana works with search. And Cortana only works when you're, um, when you have an internet connection. So, and Cortana only works if you have a microphone attached to your computer. If, there, if your computer has a, has a microphone like a laptop, okay, uh, Cortana will see it and say, talk to me, okay? Uh, if not, uh, none of those things apply. Cortana is what's called an assistant. Think of Clippy. Well, think of... Clippy yeah. was just as bad. Yeah. Let's be honest there. Yeah, um, I've, I've, I've played with assistants before and uh, I don't find them of much use. Uh, I turn my computer on in the morning with an assistant. The assistant comes on and says, good morning. Here is your itinerary for the day. Okay, and it rattles off a half a dozen things that I put in my to-do list. And uh, then it says, oh, by the way, you have mail. Would you like me to open the mail and read it to you? Okay, and Cortana will do that. Um, and she gives me the leaf scores. Yeah, yeah. And uh, if 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 she is uh, and if she's really good um, in your e maybe a message in your email w would be uh, from from someone saying, "I need you to get on an airplane and come here." Cortana will understand that and say, "Would you like me to book you a flight?" and we'll do it, okay? That's what assistants do. As far as Cortana goes, ignore her, <laughs> okay? Unless you like what she's doing for you. It's stupid, because even if you turn it off, it still takes up the same resources. Yeah. Because yeah. I've turned it off, and it still takes, uh, I think, 50 megabytes of RAM. Which, if you're low on RAM, it makes your computer slow. So, Cortana is under system settings. Um, if, you, if we go in there, we can enable it. I'm not going to. If you go in there, you can probably disable it. That might be what you want to do. Actually, you don't even have to do that. The moment you uh, start, uh, click on the search, there at the gear underneath home is the settings for her. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So there you go, Cortana, that's your little issue taken care of. Everybody else have a little issue. I, I kept getting a notice now that Google no longer is supported for XP and Yeah, you're going to get that. I'm afraid so. <laughs> what it means, my dear, is you're going to have to pry open your wallet. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That I better quit it. Uh, yeah, you're going to have to pry open your wallet if you want to keep using a computer and uh, buy something newer. Because that just came up. This yeah, yeah it's, it's, um, it's not supporting Windows XP anymore. You can stick with what you have, but over the next little while, uh, things will stop working and things will stop working and things will stop working. And then the computer will stop working. It's like, guys, yeah. come on. Yeah. Get me a new one. That's all I'm teaching. I can't do this. Yeah. Yes? This is a stupid question. No, it's not. Um, with my Mac, even though it's not that old, the, the newest update for the OS that I have, it, it, people are having trouble with it, so they recommend using an external backup drive, which I've never backed up anything. Yeah. If, and I phoned the store, it cost me about $140 yeah. to buy this thing, and I have no idea what it is. Like, is it a disk or a... Um, it, it is. It is, in fact, a, a large hard drive, and you have a program on your Mac um, uh, specifically for backing up your entire computer, um, and you use that program in conjunction with this large hard drive. Um, so I, I'm really stupid, but if I go to the store, I'm, like I'm thinking, 140 dollars and blah blah. blah like I mean. I'm tempted not to back it up, nor to update to this new update. But yeah. like this $140 thing, 
what is it? Is it a disk? Is it a it's a hard drive. It's a hard drive in a box. Oh. Okay, so that's all it is. You just plug it in and... Uh, a USB port? Yeah, you oh. just plug it into a USB okay. port, plug it into the wall, and there you go. Yes. Now, uh, might I make a suggestion? Um, how old is your Mac? It's less than six years old, but I guess... Okay, at this, at this point, um, you probably have uh, not the latest operating system, uh, but close enough. And at this point, I would say to you, do not try and update your six-year-old Mac. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, if, if other people have had problems and you've seen this, and you've seen this, uh, don't bother with the upgrade. That's what I, I do it, I do it uh, for my uh, six, seven-year-old Mac because I, I, I'm pretty savvy at it, and I can usually get myself out of a problem that it's made. But so far, it has not made problems, but the next upgrade, mm. So is, have yeah. you used this El Capitan? Yeah, I'm on El Capitan now. Okay. I don't um, think yeah, this but uh, if, uh, if uh, yeah, it, at this point, uh, if you're still on the one before El Capitan, run that until the computer dies. That's You've probably got another 10 years. I thought maybe I'm being stupid, but no. thank you. You yeah. told me I'm not El Capitan. Yeah. What happened to the cat one? I was trying to think of the name of this. Yeah. Like lion, leopard, and snow yeah. leopard, yeah. snow lion. Okay, folk, that's it. That's our hour. Thank you so much for coming. We'll get this on to uh, video as quickly as we can. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.